we good. Welcome everyone online and welcome the people who are here. I see you. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody's converted back to Zoom. Um, we will see, we'll see. <laughs> the two people who made it back on time. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So everyone else who are joining us on Zoom, welcome back. I got the honor of presenting our next breakout speaker. Um, we have Tita Mary Jane Collado here, who you guys know are familiar with in the North Campus. She's spoken there before as well. Um, so she is the mother of Shahana. Some of you guys may know her as one of the youth leaders. And she is just a strong advocate of women and supporting our, our community here in the church. So. Without further ado, I just want to welcome Sister Mary Jane Collado. Thank you. Let's welcome her. Woo! Woo! Praise God. Hallelujah. Should I pray? I'd like, I always wanted to pray just before uh, things will happen. So uh, I always want the Holy Spirit to lead us into to His presence. And that's what I would like to start our uh, topic for today. So let us bow our heads wherever you are, our women who are attending in this uh, uh, attending this uh, conference. I'd like to uh, invite you to bow before the Lord and let us welcome the Holy Spirit to be in our midst uh, this afternoon. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord for your great love and your mercy. We thank you, God, for today, for this opportunity that we are, can come together as women to hear the word, the word, so that we'll be able to learn from it and that we'll be able to apply into our lives. And we thank you for the open door for everyone who are attending, either in Zoom or Facebook, wherever they are, Lord, we thank you, God, that they are open to the biblical uh, teaching that, are, that you would like them to know, Lord. We'd like to know your word this afternoon, and we'd like to learn the message, Lord, about a woman of faith. And I pray that you will bless the message, you will bless everyone, the ears, and bless your servant, Lord, as we speak your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Woman of faith, hallelujah, praise the Lord. How many believe that, how many women that are here who says they are the woman of faith? Amen. Say, I am. Because our, our team is, I am, I, I am 2020, right? So we are the woman of faith 2020. Hallelujah. So we are the woman of faith. Why? Because Jesus lives in us. He resha, he resides in our hearts. Amen? So that is why we're called the woman of faith. So I'd like to start my message taken from the book of Ruth. If you know, if you know that uh, the book, which is very popular and very powerful, book in the Old Testament. And also I'd like to use also the book of Esther, which is also a powerful woman and I and powerful woman that displays the power of God working beside uh, behind the scene in that story. And also the book of Hannah, uh, I mean not book of Hannah, Samuel, right? So there is a passage there that talks about Hannah, the mother of Samuel. Not my daughter, but the mother of Samuel, the prophet. All right. So I'd like to start by describing what is a woman of faith mean. All right. So a woman of faith, I believe that they are the woman who trust in God. Right? We can write that down. A woman of faith are the women who trust in the Lord. They are the one who has the fear of God. 
number two, and a woman who has the unwavering faith and has the total dependency on God. A woman of faith, according to the book of Proverbs 31, verse 10 and 30, they are beautiful. Women of faith are beautiful and they are more precious than rubies. And they are, they are the women who continually refresh themselves with the word of God. Those are the women of faith. They trust in God's promises and they trust in the word and of course, prayerfully they execute hallelujah those are the description of a woman of faith so even in the time of so that in the time of trials or temptations or whatever difficulties that comes in their way they are strong in their faith why because their foundation is built on solid rock, who is Jesus. Their faith is built on Jesus, in other words. And Jesus said, if, John 15, that's 15, 7, Jesus said, if you remain in me, I will remain in you. And if you ask, and if you you remain in me, ask whatever you wish, and it shall be given to you. So woman of faith, in the time of desperation, Jesus said, because you believe in me, you have faith in the solid rock, who is Jesus. When you ask something in the time of your distress, it shall, it shall be given to you. Amen? So God, in other words, God will reward or God will give the desire of the heart in times of difficulties because that woman has the faith, is, her faith is built on solid ground, which is Jesus, the rock. He, she made him the rock, the, the rock, her fortress and her strong foundation. So faith, a woman of faith must be built. Our faith must be built on Jesus. And Jesus is the king who could reside in the heart of women who believe and who trust with unwavering in Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like to set, I'd like to read the story. I'd like to uh, uh, read the story or refresh the story of Ruth. I'd like to link my teaching with the life of Ruth and Naomi. Chapter 1, book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. The verse said, the scripture said, but Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back wherever you go. I will go. Wherever you leave, I will leave. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Seven, uh, 17, where you die, I will die. And then... And there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate you, to separate us. This is the word taken from the book of Ruth. This is a powerful, powerful scripture that display a woman who is a very good example of loyalty in obedience. Amen. An example of faith, of an unwavering faith, that even though, according to this, even though Naomi and the daughter in law, who is the Ruth, I will tell you this, a little story about it shortly. 
even though they went through pain and bitterness in their lives, especially Naomi, but we can see that there is the spirit of faithfulness in here and unwavering trust on God and also the kindness that Ruth has displayed in this story. Amen. So if you read the story of Ruth, the entire book of Ruth, it is very, very, it is a very, very a good example of a woman who went through some storm in their lives, these two powerful women. But then at the end, God has had rewarded them. Amen. So, these two women, like Naomi is a Jew, all right? She, Naomi and her husband Elimelech went to Moab and because there was famine in Judah. So these people belong to the Judah, Ju, uh, Judah tribe, all right? So they went to Moab and their sons, their two sons, married with two Moabite women. And time came, I'd like to shorten, time came, the husband of Naomi died, and two, and the sons died, remaining three women who are now widow, right? So, time came, Naomi heard that the crops now in Judah are getting better. So, because he has nothing left now in Moab, so she decided to go back to the Judah with the two, with the two uh, daughter-in-law. Along the way, they did not reach the place yet, but she talked to the daughter-in-law saying, go back to your homeland because I don't have any more, I don't have nobody for you, and it's better for you to go back to your own mother. And so these powerful words, that's why Ruth did, said to her mother-in-law, or she clung to her mother-in-law saying, I just read the story, I just read the, the, the verse, that wherever you go, I will go. Don't let me go back, because I will follow you. I will be with you, I will live wherever you will live, and your God will be my God. So this, this powerful statement is, we can see there is a display or a demonstration of acceptance to the God of Naomi, of her mother-in-law. She doesn't know what is going to happen to Judah or to where they were going. She doesn't know, but she has made up her mind that she will clung to the mother-in-law and follow her wherever they go. This is a, an ex, and she has accepted the God of Naomi. That's a sign of powerful powerful, faithful woman that she had accepted the God of Naomi. And he said, he, even the people of Naomi, he said, your people will also be my people. I don't know if we know a woman who loved, who truly loved their mother-in-law. We're talking about women. And they are willing to risk their lives or willing to rest their lives or give everything for the sake of somebody. I'm sure as a woman of faith in this world, I'm sure there are women out there who truly love their mother-in-laws. Can I say amen? I, can I get amen from women? Amen. Praise the Lord. You are really a woman of faith. You love your mother-in-law. Right? Praise God. So, these two ladies, now they were in Moab, uh, Judah. So because Naomi is also a widow, she told the, the daughter-in-law to go to the place. Pwede bang magtagalog? 
I'm, I'm sure there are Filipinos out there or listening in non-Filipinos. Sabi niya, mag-ani doon. So, he asked, she asked the mother, daughter in law she gave instruction. Alright? In other words, she gave instruction and the daughter-in-law went there to make the story short and she ended up in Boaz. Boaz Field. Alright? This is a very good love story. So, nag-ani po siya doon. And then, Boaz found her and everything went good, went right. So the, 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 the lesson that I'd like to, to uh, emphasize here is that even in the time, because of Naomi, I believe that this woman who really cries out to the Lord in her distress, she did not run to somebody else to help her, but because even though he lost everything, he lost husband, he lost sons, in her distress, she faithfully remained strong even in the midst of her uncertainty. So with that, God has opened the door for these two women to find rest in the Lord, to find blessings, to find the answer of what they need, to find God had provided something beautiful in their lives because Ruth ended up marrying Boaz and of course she ended up looking after the mother-in-law and these two women because of the kindness of Ruth to her mother-in-law and because of the faith of Naomi unto God, God honored these two women with blessing by blessing them. Amen? They got blessed, right? She married Boaz. She was blessed with a godly husband. All right. And so as Naomi. So if I see my daughter marrying somebody who is godly, I am blessed. Why? Because probably I am who, who is Naomi. For example, I put myself in Naomi's, Naomi's uh, shoes. I, will, I, I am the person who will be encouraging my daughter-in-law who lost the husband as well. I am already old, but I can be an instrument to reach out to other women, to encourage them to move on forward. Despite of the distress, despite of storm that comes in their way, that they have gone through bitterness, whatever pain, I'm, I'm sure there's pain, there's painful feeling in their, in their hearts when they lost, both lost their husband. I know it for, for sure because when I was in Saudi Arabia, the women who became widow over there, because I worked for, for the grandson of King Fahad bin Abdul Aziz before, and the, the mother became widow. And so she really was grieving so hard. And for those, for the Middle Eastern uh, women, if they lost their husband, as if they lost everything. So I understand the feeling of Naomi, who lost everything, but according to the story, in the midst of that, she remained faithful. And because of that faithfulness or kindness, acceptance, steadfastness can be rewarded. Amen? And who get to be, re and who can reward us? Of course, the foundation of our faith, who is Jesus. He is our rewarder. Amen? Hallelujah. So, example of, of a loving kindness, an example of a loving kindness is Ruth. She did not look after only her own interests, but she also looked after the interests of others. And that's we women can also do. As a woman of God, we can not only look after our own interests, but the Bible says we look also after the interests of others. Other women, some women, they look after their own interests first before others. But in the biblical point of view, in the scripture, is the other way around. 
The Bible instructs us to look into others' interests first and then ourselves. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many time I get? Okay. Half an hour. <laughs> okay, so Ruth demonstrates loyalty and obedience. She not only has submitted herself to the mother-in-law, but she has submitted herself unto the Lord. Amen. And that submission and acceptance to the faith of Naomi and to the God of Naomi opens the door of blessings and protection. Hallelujah. So it opens the door of blessings and protection. We get that part. Praise God. Because of her loyalty. Hallelujah. With Naomi, with Naomi, because of her faithfulness unto the Lord, even in the midst of uncertainty. I'm going to read to you Isaiah 46, verse 2. For Naomi, this is the answer. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Sound, this is Isaiah 46, 2. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. That is a powerful promise from God. When we walk, even though, when we walk through the storm, even though, when we walk through the shadow of the valley of death, God said, I am with you. Amen. He said it to Joshua. When Joshua was in the war and Joshua saw their enemies, tens, thousands of them. And there, are only, there were only 300 soldiers in there. And Joshua said, look, God, Lord, what will I do? There are tens, thousands of soldiers out there. Our enemies are, have outnumbered us. What will we do? And God said to Joshua, Joshua, do not be discouraged. Do not be dismayed. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. This is just like going into the battle zone. A woman of faith who are, who have gone through many things in their lives. They are like a soldier that are going to the battle zone. When they see something, they could back out. They could be, they could be defeated whatsoever. But God said, do not be discouraged. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For I am with you. In other words, we can do it, my friend, ladies. Even though when we walk through the storm, we can do it. Because God said, when you walk through deep waters, I will be with you. He will be with us, ladies, even when we go through deep waters. That means when we go through malalim na malalim na problema, God said, I will be with you. When we go through too much difficulties in life, God said, you will not be drowned. Why? Because God is with us. He's going to lift us up from the deep waters. When we thought that maybe we are almost drowning, God said, do not be afraid, ladies or women. Just be faithful. Just remain steadfast in your faith in me. And I will lift you up and I will save you from your enemies or from your trouble. What happened to Naomi and Ruth? They lost their husbands, but they remained loyal in obedience to God. And God 
has rewarded them with blessings and protection. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, woman, let us not give up for whatever we go through. We need to persevere. We need to remain steadfast. Keep going. Remain faithful. Stay connected. John 15. With God. Because God, he said in the book of Luke, there's nothing impossible with God. Even in man, in the eyes of man, maybe it is impossible. But with God, he said, nothing is impossible with God. He can do everything only if we remain steadfast in him. Because he is our strong tower. He is the safest place to go. The righteous run into him and they are safe. Jesus is our strong tower. He is our rewarder. Amen. Now, let's proceed to the book of Esther. Don't worry, I'm monitoring my time. <laughs> In the book of Esther, there's a story also. This one has a little bit similarities, all right? But they are not similar. But story, I'm, I like to, 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 to meditate on these books, three books. The book of Esther also. Chapter 4, verse 16. I'm going to write it to you. Go gather all the Jews who are in Susa. And fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days. Night and day. And I, and, I, and I and my servants or attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will Go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Powerful, 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 powerful verse. Hallelujah. God knowing, how many knows the story of Esther? I believe most of us, right? And it's really, it's really powerful encouragement to watch, uh, to, to, to meditate on the word. So there's the story of niece and uncle. Uncle Mordecai, I'm, I'm cutting the, the story to keep my time, all right? Uncle Mordecai and Esther. Esther got married with a king, all right? You know that part? And, what, and she was in the palace. She lives there with the king. But I don't know how king and, you know, beautiful woman are married, but we know that in the Middle Eastern before, they have so many wives, right? Like Solomon. He has uh, 700 wives, 300 concubines. Or the other way around. Medjo. So Esther was in the palace. She was chosen to be the queen in, 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 uh, instead of Vasti. So the story goes like this. Mordecai was, his, was her uncle, and he was always by the city gate. And there was the time that he has an enemy called Haman. Maybe he is the military leader or the assistant of the king, whatever, assistant of the king. His name is Haman, and Haman is so jealous of Mordecai because Mordecai... Uh, had uh, became the uh, uh, parang uh, he he saved the king because the king was was going to be assassinated by two people by two men, but he went to report it. He became a reporter. All right, parang intelligence. All right, it may not be accurate, but that's how I I view it. So he told the king about that, and so the king was pleased. But the story goes like this. During the time, this, this Haman made Haman so furious that he wanted to destroy all the Jews 
in the land in that time, right? Because he was jealous to, the, to Mordecai. He wanted to destroy them. And there was a schedule, imagine that. There was a schedule of execution of every Jewish, of every Jewish people in the land. And so Mordecai heard it. And so he reported it to Esther. Since Esther lives in the palace, so Mordecai, Mordecai sent the news. And so the instruction was, was Esther told the, the, uh, the, the, the message, sent the message to her uncle. Go and tell all the Jews to fast for three days, day and night. That, that's the key, all right? They fast, and me and my attendants will also fast here in the palace. And then after, at the end of the, uh, the, end of the three days, I will go to the king. Even though it is against the law, I am going there, and if I perish, I perish. What a powerful, what a powerful, powerful uh, scripture this is. If I die, I die. That's what it meant. All right? So, in this situation, it is between life and death. So, in this, life and death. Life and death. So, Esther went to the king, and he invited the king to go for the banquet. And the king said, because of the fasting, that was the key. The key opened the door for protection, all right? The key, the key of fasting and praying opened the door for protection, all right? So Esther went to the king and he, she, she said, if I could invite you to the banquet, and the king said, whatever you, will, you ask, I will, go even, I will give it to you even half of the kingdom. So that is the promising answer of the king. So, because Mordecai now is getting nervous, come on, go to the king, because we are all going to die in this date. So, when they were in the banquet, the king asked Esther, what is your request? Oh, my. Sorry. I thought pinatay ko. Hindi pala. Okay. All right. Sorry po. So, what is your request? And Esther told every story, told the story to the king. And the king became furious, and the guy wanted to execute the whole, the whole community of the Jews. Instead of Mordecai being hung to that pole na hinanda niya, my 75 feet pole, doon daw niya ibitin si, si Mordecai, instead of Mordecai to be hanged there, he was the one. Hand, the enemies. See, this is the story where God was working behind the scene. God, there is a purpose for this. God put Esther in the palace because his intention, the enemies, has intended to destroy the people of God. But God has intended to save them. So before this happened, God prepared the way. God prepared Esther to become the queen so that the queen will somehow will save the entire Jews, the people of God. Amen. So we can see the picture on how God's hand is working on, on the fight of people who truly trust him. And these are the Jew, the people of God, the Jewish people, whom God said he, they are the apple of God's eye. So because of the faith of Uncle Mordecai and the fasting and praying, see, when we are going to the battle, we got to be ready. Amen. We got to put our shield in everything. According to the book of Ephesians, we have the shield or breastplate of everything. We have to shield ourselves before we even get there. Because if we are not ready, and their shield was praying and fasting. Amen. So that is the key of winning the battle. They were victorious 
at the end of that story. Why? Because God was working be behind them. God was with them. Even though they are, uh, they are on the brink of death, life in death, God was with them. This, he saved them. See, the enemy is very, uh, is very tricky. The enemy wanted to destroy, and that is the, that is the, um, yung papel ng ni Satan, ni Satanas po. He, he came to kill, destroy, and steal. And he wanted to destroy the people of God, but God came. God, Jesus came to give life, to preserve life, and to give hope, not to destroy life. That's God stand for all, for those who love him and for those who remain steadfast in him. Those who dwell in his presence, those who keep him as their refuge, if we take refuge in God, God, will, God is faithful and just, all right, to save us, to bless us, to protect us. Praise God. That was the story of Esther. With Hannah. So the enemy, the eternal, oh, I already read that. Enemy. The enemy is always coming after us, right? How many has enemies? Not talking about physical enemies. You may have physical enemies. But we're talking about the spiritual enemies, Satan, right? Want to destroy the people of God. But God is faithful. God is faithful. For every woman who has faith in God, the unwavering faith of God, just like Esther and Ruth, God is working behind them, behind the scene. God is backing us up. See, the whole heaven, when prayer and fasting is there, the whole heaven, windows of heaven is open, the whole heaven is backing us up. Because God's army are everywhere. The angels of heaven, he can send his angels concerning us for our protection. That's how God loves every woman and every people who remain with their unwavering trust on him. So let us not waver our trust on God. Even on the, when we are facing Goliath. Even when we are facing difficult times in our lives, we should be brave enough as women of faith to stand before the Lord we don't need weapons of whatever palakol we can get we just need our heart we just need our faith to stand before the Lord and said Lord here I am I need you I cannot do it but I am going to persevere despite of what enemies I will be facing. Despite of my family being destroyed, the enemies trying to destroy my relationship with my family, whatsoever God, your intention is not to destroy me. I am determined to follow you. And I am determined, O oh Lord, to give you honor and praise, even though I walk in the storm of life. James said, trials and temptation can be overcome. Sometimes it is a test of faith so that we will become mature in our faith. See, when we are immature in our faith, magkaroon po tayo ng waver. Now we waver po tayo sa ating pananampalataya. We, we, uh, we have uh, uh, medyo 50-50 po tayo. Why? 
because sometimes we are being overwhelmed with so many mountains in our lives that we can face on a daily basis. But God said, if you have a small faith, just like the mustard seed, you can move that mountain. What is that mountain? It's not the bundok that you push and it will fall down. The mountain that Jesus was talking about could be the storm in life. And when we, oh, when we and Jesus, and, and if we have faith in Jesus, we are equipped. We must be equipped with the power that comes from the Holy Spirit to overcome everything. And that is faith. James chapter, um, James chapter one. Oh, I don't know where is my where did I write that part? But James said, maybe I think in chapter five. Faith without action is dead. All right. So when we have that faith, we got to activate it. When we are facing the mountains. Because if you do not activate your faith, you don't do anything to it. It's just like the farmer who has the bag of potatoes and she, he wanted to be prosperous farmer, but he didn't do anything with the potato. He didn't plant it. He just leave it in the corner and of course the potato did not multiply. The potatoes did not become fruitful or whatsoever. It did not prosper. Why? Because he just leave it in the corner. If we have faith, even though as little as the mustard seed, when we activate that faith and we said it to the Lord God, the only way that I can overcome my mountains is when I allow the presence of the Almighty to live in my heart. And when I have that characteristic, just like Jesus, just like, just like Jesus, we are made into his own image, right? And the character of Jesus, if I have the kindness, I can change my enemies, my enemies' attitude. If I am kind to my enemies, my enemies might change. All right? If I am, if I will, God said, love your enemies, it is very difficult to love enemies, right? But Jesus said, love your enemies. So if I am going to exercise, my fight by loving my enemies that might change the situation all right the burning fire out there might die down if i am going to display i'm if i am going to display what god told me that i should be kind what god told me that i should be that I should be gentle. What God told me that I should show God righteousness so that my enemies, instead of letting the fire burn, my enemies might come to me and said, here I am, might draw them nigh to God. I might draw, see, Kindness can draw people to God. Those people who are maybe not believing, but yet if they see what God told us as a woman of faith to be kind to others, they will be drawn to God. Amen. That is the key. That is why we women, we it is, this is a very good opportunity that we can encourage one another. We can teach one another with what God wants us to be. The word of God, 
that we, the women of faith, are always continually refresh that we should be refreshing ourselves with the word of God is used to teach to rebuke and to correct and to train other women in righteousness 2 Timothy 3.16 that's what it's for that's why we are here we are not here to make ourselves known to the world but we are here to speak out the word of our testimony so that we women of faith might be able to bring glory to God when women will be encouraged by us there are women maybe who doesn't but let us pray just like going to the battle amen Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm almost there. Conclusion. Oh, I'm already graded there. So, what we have learned from the book of Ruth is that kindness, loyalty, and obedience produce divine protection and blessings. God, number two, God rewards, can reward women who are submissive to his will and purpose. Amen. When we are submissive to the will and purpose of God, he will make a way for us. Even though in our eyes there is no way, but God said, yes, there is a way. Even though we said, women, it is very impossible. I cannot change him. I cannot change her. I cannot change. But God said, yes, nothing is impossible with me. When we go through the storm, we said, Lord, wala nang pag-asa. Hindi ko po alam anong gagawin ko sa aking buhay. God said, you have faith, you can overcome it. Because you are, you are made as an overcomer, not a loser. Amen? We are made more than conqueror. Hallelujah. So, in the time of battle song, the key for us to go to the battle is to pray. A woman of faith must be prayerful. Amen? Sometimes, I have to admit to, pag minsan, wala nang oras, but my car, my car is a place of my intercession. Even when I am driving, in the morning, pag hindi ako nagpunta sa aking closet, in my car is my prayer, prayer warrior room. I pray inside my car. I meditate. I mabuti pa doon. Walang nakakarinig. But anyway, even if they hear, you know that I have a neighbor, Indian po. Every, every day I meditate. And I speak loud as you can hear it. I speak loud, In one day he came to my husband and he said, is your wife okay? Yeah. Because he said, she said she's hearing me uh, uh, talking loud because I speak in tongues, right? Talking loud, but I was speaking about God. And there must be something. He thought, sa totoo lang, she thought that I may be going crazy. But no. I am talking to my father. Right? And I don't know if you know my story. But I'm not going to go into that. But I went through storm also in my life. The most unexpected, painful storm in life that I could ever imagine. But what I did, I pray, Jesus, was my strong tower. Lord, 
I am going to, I am in the battle zone now. You are my protector. You are ikaw po ang aking, ang aking protector. I pray and pray and pray every day. And I was left just so you know, four years ago. Four, three, four years ago. I, allow, I was left with 140,000 debt because we were assessed by the revenue we owe 48,000 we have a car to pay we have so and so bus business to pay a total of 140,000 and before that it was a very very difficult situation for me I have to pay my mortgage I have to pay my cars everything and I said, Lord, and I just quit my job in Bethany Care Center. What do I do? I was left with this. And it was simple. I made my car, my prayer warrior, in my closet. I pray every day. And I said, Lord, I give everything unto you. There must be something there that you can do so that I might be able to see the light of days. That I know, Lord. I know, Lord, that you are my hope, you are my everything, and I am placing my faith in you. My faith is just a little as mustard seed, but you said, if I have that, I can move mountains. Three years ago, three years ago. To this date, praise God, not only that, that 140,000 is now paid. Praise God. I was by myself. And I have two university students. I had to pay their car. I had to pay everything. God provided my needs. I said, Lord, it's all yours. I do not know what to do. I don't have anybody. I don't have to go to anybody and beg. Because you said, do you not gonna allow your children to beg for bread. And I trusted the Lord with my unwavering faith. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. If I have sinned against you and against people, please forgive me. But here I am. I surrender my life to you. I give everything unto you, my children, everything. And you know, God opened the door as I said, and I am up to date now. And not only that, he provide job for me more and more and more. He opens the door for business. And I'm running a business. And I thank God that with this, thank God for this, because I can share my story. I do not have to go into detail, but that is the the conclusion of it, conclusion of the matter, that is the most important. God is good. How many believe that you, woman of faith? We got to stand before God and be a woman of faith and be like a soldier, not like the black like potato is in there that did not prosper, that did not, did not, did not grow. Why? Don't live that way. Just move on, persevere, and continue being steadfast in your faith in God. Amen. We don't have to do extraordinary. We just have to trust the Lord with all our heart. Amen. Praise God. That is the conclusion of the matter. And I thank God for all of you who are here and who are watching. Praise be to God. Because we have this opportunity to hear the word of our testimony that brings glory and honor to our Father. Amen? I'm going to leave this. Jesus is the foundation of our faith. Truly, he's our rock. He's our foundation. He's our fortress. Amen? The results, God rewards, uh, re God rewards blessing, life in protection, and victory for every woman who remain faithful, steadfast, and strong 
in the Lord. Be a woman of faith, my friend. Thank you very much. God bless you. Hello, hello. Yes, oh God, hallelujah. Wherever you are, let us lift our hands to heaven and receive God's power, mercy, and grace that is abundance so that, Lord, we raise up our hands unto you. We know, Lord God, that in this life we have so many things but God, we would like to, open, to, to, to lift up unto you our brother or our sisters in you. Whatever things you may be going through, Lord, we know that you are there working behind the scene to touch and release your protection, your blessing upon each one of us. And I pray for those people who are maybe struggling, or facing any kind of obstacle. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will release your anointing upon them so that when they call unto you, Lord, God, they will be able to find hope. They will be able to find the answer that they're looking, Lord God, in their lives. And most especially, I pray that you will open door, oh God, in their hearts, that their hearts will be open for you to reside in there so that that faith will grow, so that that faith will become their shield wherever they go, whatever they go through. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will release, oh God, your blessing, release your healing upon them. Lord, from the inside out, make every woman beautiful by their, by their fight in you so that they become a good example, a model, oh Lord, of submission, of acceptance, of steadfastness in their faith. Lord, I pray that God all these things that we are asking in the name of Jesus that you will minister to every heart, every woman and everyone else, even in the family. I pray for every mother, oh God. Lord, I know I am a mother. There are mothers that are struggling. I pray, God, that you will release, Lord, this the release your power to set them free and so that they will be able, oh Lord God, to know and understand that you are there working behind the scene and whatever they go through in the name of Jesus, when they are faithful in you, if they remain and make you their refuge, you will grant them the desire of their hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you for this session, Lord. Thank you for this women's conference, Lord. We are blessed and we thank Thank you for your presence in the name of Jesus. Amen.